everybody welcome back to our uh, weekly abuse of a 24 year old game this is the sever chains dev stream how is everyone doing tonight uh, we're gonna start off by looking at this really cute picture of my cat this is strider uh, he is the coziest cat on the face of the planet Uh, and we're going to follow that up by something a little bit less exciting, which is showing off the uh, recent OpenGL changes that we've been working on. <clears throat> hey, Ontario. <laughs> hey, Icarus. We still haven't uh, implemented the menus yet, so that's all still uh, black screen, but... Um... So I can't remember if we had this on the previous stream or not, but uh, we've now got the uh, the world map looking like basically being like a one to one match with retail. Um, you can see it's it's quite a bit more zoomed in now. Uh, in the future, I am planning on adding options to uh, basically be able to configure how you want the world map to look, uh, as well as combat. So right now, by default, uh, the retail world map actually only uses a 17 degree field of view. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll have a mode that uh, bumps that up to at least 45 degrees, which is the uh, like maximum uh, value that you can go to without getting some distortion around the edges of your screen. Uh, but probably allow users to uh <clears throat> adjust that higher as well uh as well as doing uh proper widescreen right now i've just got it set up so that it stretches to uh whatever size you have the window set to uh but that being said we have been working on sub maps So we've actually got all of this rendering really well even be being able to walk in behind of and in front of these overlays so you can see i'm walking in front of this wall right now but i can also walk in behind it that was unbelievably difficult to get working we had to do some really 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 complicated hacks and some weird ass math to be able to get that all to work um the ps1 does something that modern graphics cards can't really do anymore um just due to the nature of uh how they work being you know massively parallel processors um you know a modern graphics card can have up to like uh like over a thousand processor cores all working together so there are some things done uh in the name of efficiency and uh efficiency and just you know functionality being able to keep the rendering stable uh and it really really complicated how we had to do some of this stuff but uh, it's working really well now now you can kind of see a more close-up view of dart here and it's uh the very very big difference on the uh on the model quality better shading and everything i recently got uh dialogue working as well so that's obviously a, a pretty big uh <laughs> big thing hey pony bro how's it going Thank you, uh, Kamikolo. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Also, hello. And I will never get over how smooth this uh, pan in is. Even looking at like the treasure boxes and stuff, it's so big of a difference. And of course, uh, this is still 30 frames per second. We will be upping this to 60 at some point. Uh, probably once we've got a lot more of the rendering implemented. 
not on the uh, stablest of Wi-Fi connections, I take it. Uh, so the topic of this stream, uh, we are going to be working on the OpenGL code for combat, getting it started. Uh, so I will show what a battle looks like right now. This is it. It's a black screen. Yes. And we're going to try and make it at least slightly better than a black screen. Uh, so... We need to open up our battle which will be in here somewhere, battle. <laughs> yeah, exactly how it was meant to be viewed. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. All right, I'll, I'll defer this uh, this question to you. Should we start with uh, the 3D model for the battlefield itself, or should we start with the uh, battle entities like the players and the monsters? <laughs> Entities in a black environment would look sick. Yeah, it probably would. <laughs> All right, someone's going to have to break the tie here. All right, Hellspawn says players and monsters. Oh, God damn it, pony bro. <laughs> it's on Ryu. All right, we need another tiebreaker. We're at four, or we're at two and two. Players and monsters. All right, Vincent. Yeah, we're doing we're doing players and monsters. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. So we need to figure out where the player models are loaded. Will it be as easy as looking for the load model function? You would think that it would be, but nothing in this game is easy. Let's see. Nope, it is not that easy. Those are not for the initial load. Uh, let's see here. Um. Is animation renderer render battle model okay so we need to see where this is set uh, um okay we need to see where it is initialized then Yeah, in order to do the skybox, I need to uh, actually add support for uh, rendering MCQs first. And uh, that wouldn't be very exciting for, uh, for the stream. 
Okay, I think we've got the model loading here. So this should be pretty straightforward. Um, let's see here. Uh, what did I call this? Right. Is on the individual D objects. So we're going to the model parts. Okay, um, we want to load it from the object table. So tmd dot tmd dot tmd dot table. Don't ask. Give us our that'll actually load the OpenGL models uh, and upload them to the graphics card. And we need to find where these are actually being rendered. Probably right here. So we're going to say if model dot part i dot object is not null, we queue that with the render engine. And the local world matrix. And we're gonna see what happens. Hey, Dart. So I've wrapped up a lot of the OpenGL code, um, which makes it a lot easier to use. Uh, as you can see here, um, you know that was that was really quick to get that code in there. Now we're going to see if it actually worked. Okay. Uh, we don't have the lighting set, but I mean, there you go. <laughs> that is OpenGL combat. Look at those animations. All right, let's uh, turn on auto additions so we can see something pull. Actually, I'm going to back out to the main menu. Hopefully I'm pressing the right buttons here. Uh, I don't think I am. I uh, quit to main menu. So uh, that'll be coming in the next build as well. Okay. So we're on the main menu now. Continue. Select the first campaign. Nope. We were not on the main menu. Okay.
I just want to load a save further in the game. Okay. Select first campaign, second save. There we go. Look at how smooth this is. All right, so let's go into battle here. Let's find a battle that's a little bit more interesting, too. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Make the black screen a feature, blind playthrough, yeah. Right, Divine Dragon. Hopefully this fight works uh, just from the encounter starter. Very colorful. We've got the RGB Divine Dragon, which uh, obviously increases performance. Oh, it's because uh, no dart is enabled on this save. Uh, that was just an issue. We may or may not fix the remaining no dart issues uh, for the next release. Uh, it depends on uh, how long the OpenGL update takes. Let's... Uh, hmm... Not Faust. Yeah, sure, why not, Grand Jewel? 416. Ongol with his glowing mohawk. Does this fight also not work with no dart? Oh, no. I'm just an idiot. It's waiting for me to do something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's make sure I've got uh, auto additions on. Because I am uh, bad enough at additions as it is. Actually, real quick here, let's see if um okay so backtrack here. <clears throat> okay is there any pre multiplied lighting happening possibly. Let's just, uh, light direction. We'll just do this quick and dirty here. I'm going to check the submap for a second. Okay, so it use the light direction matrix. All right, I the rest of the math on the GPU. All right, so let's see if this just works. We'll let that recompile. Yeah, there we go. We've got lighting for the most part. Bungle's uh, still got a glow-in-the-dark mohawk. 
And uh, even though we're only running at 20 frames per second, because that's the standard frame rate for combat, just uh, look at how smooth those animations are. Zoom it in here a bit more, even though it'll make uh, Kongle a real wide boy. All right, so we've got auto additions on. I have no idea who, which character I'm controlling. It's Miranda. Just wait until we do 60 frames per second if you want to see smooth. Now let's see if I can get uh, Dragoon transformation here. Oh, this is not going to work because it doesn't use the same uh, model loading code. I only updated one. Uh, one of the places that models are loaded. Oh look, it worked. I lied. Oh right, Dragon Block Staff. But we wanted to see Dragoons anyway. Interesting that it must load a different model there or something. And then reload the model uh, when they come back down. Not really sure why that would be a thing, but, you know, LOD devs. Just how it is. Oh yes, there's going to be a lot of effect pain. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they actually reload the entire model when loading that new animation. Oh, maybe you should uh, hurry up and get the new music engine in. Yeah, I got you. All right. Well, let's do some more of those model loaders then. Okay, let's uh, backtrack to wherever it was that we made that change. I think it was in here. Yes. I'm just going to copy this. That will be good for anywhere that that's used. Um, we got a couple of different methods used to load models here. That's one of them. It's only used there. Uh, and that is only used there. Um, What about load model? Load model, standard, animation. I don't think this actually sets the model. I don't think. No, it doesn't. Now, load model. That is likely. 
Yeah, definitely looking like it. So you do this, and it is already just a regular TMD, not the container, container, container. Up Zychronics, we already have battle models loading. <laughs> it works, you can just never finish a battle. <laughs> Oh, Zonryu, I mean, uh, coding's not the only part of the puzzle here. Um, you know, we also need people to do testing and stuff, so... You know, there is stuff for really anyone who wants to, to do. Let's fight... No, let's fight someone with a couple of different monsters here. Um... Uh, what would be... Let's do the three executioners and hope that that um, doesn't have any scripting that will break from just starting the fight. Look at how good those look. All right, let's try Dragoons again. Did I do Dragoons? Okay, there we go. <laughs> the special lighting is pretty intense. Still didn't load the uh, model for the Dragoon attack. I'm not sure what it did load. Let's... Try a spell. Nothing particularly interesting there, but it worked. Alright, well that went pretty well uh, for a first. Uh, let's see if we can't get the uh, environment rendering as well. So where would that be? What do we have here? This is another renderer. Don't have any notes for what it does. Uh, looks like this is an animation type renderer.
does some shifting to the Z values, so it may not be quite as straightforward. Not going to worry about that too much for now. Um, let's uh, look back to renderer. Okay, so this is only used for the player models. Let's see what other renders we have in battle. That is that method. EMD sprite effect, so that would be for some type of effect. Uh, that's for rendering shadows. Uh, here, at battle stage. Oh, look, the render battle stage method renders the battle stage. How very convenient. We're just going to copy this and paste it. Um, we already have the T object. I am going to get rid of the iterator here, though, because iterators actually allocate objects, and we don't want to be allocating unnecessary objects uh, in a game loop like this. Uh, we will also load the battle stage model. The load stage method, that would make sense. Yeah, Nightbot's usually drunk. <clears throat> Sorry, just catching up on chat. I have not been paying much attention, unfortunately. Some of the characters would love to not have to fight in the Eternal Void. Yeah, I mean, I would. Well, I might. Okay, so MCQ, Tim. Uh, what we need is in here. Load stage EMD. So now the uh, the only issue is um, this is being done in a file loading callback, which runs in a separate thread, um, and you can only upload uh, geometry to the GPU in the main thread. So we're going to have to do some kind of synchronization here. So we can probably use this variable to detect that it's loaded. Um, battle flags and three. So let's see what flags one and two are. We might actually just be able to do it in there. Page delay ticks. Okay, so two is the combat controller. One is some amount of ticks have passed. Um, I don't think we can really do that. So I will add a new method here. Upload battle stage to GPU. And we'll put a check here if we can pregame loading stage dot increment and we will need 
to duplicate this tab here. Why did it scroll? Where the heck were we? There we go. Okay. Load stage. Got to see what goes on in here. Hey, Chocolate. Uh, we've already got models rendering in uh, combat. Hey, Kakashi. Ah, yeah, uh, big things have happened. Um, a, a, a lot of, uh, been a lot of stuff. You will see very soon. Okay, so we've got a reference to the TMD and we've got a reference to the uh, model parts, so that is all we need. So I'm just going to copy that line and put that out here. So four and i equals zero. Blah blah blah. Um, length stage dot tmd dot object table. Okay, we need to that into the TMD object loader from object. And again, this just needs to be object. Okay, so that should give us a 3D model uh, uploaded to the GPU for the battle stage. Um, oh, I do need to inject that new loading method. Upload to GPU it to the documentation as well. Load battle to GPU. That stage to GPU. Let's see if it works. <laughs> the sentient can of chocolate whipped cream has arrived. Yeah. Watching a different Let's Play alongside these videos, I had an idea in my mind to close this. The closet on the boat with everyone reaction. I wonder if we can enhance it. Yeah, um, that, uh... I've always wondered what was actually in there. Because they make a real big deal of it. Well, would you look at that? It's a battle stage. Let's go somewhere more interesting. Do we have battle stages? We do have battle stages. Where shall we go? We'll do final boss stage four. That's working. <laughs> still bleaching his mohawk though yep he certainly is no idea what's up with that i don't think the lighting is quite right um and there is quite a bit of uh like very special case rendering that they do uh for combat 
Though I've still got a bit of work to do on the actual shaders themselves to get uh, to get the rendering to actually be like one to one with retail. Well, not one to one, obviously, much better, but you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about a secret boss battle. Although, I mean, we can we do actually have the ability to pull the scripts apart now. So, I mean, Icarus, if you want to take a look and see if there's anything hidden there. <laughs> Epic location to fight a rat, yeah. Oh yeah, emulation cannot touch this. There's no way. Where else can we go? Valley of Corrupted Gravity is a pretty complex scene. Looking very smooth. It's so smooth you wouldn't even... It's hard to even tell that it's only 20 frames per second. But after we see it at 60, there will be no going back. Stream over. We did what we came to do. No. Thanks, Higashi. Uh, it's been a very, very long time getting here. And uh, the hard work is certainly paying off, to say the least. Oh, one of the Wingly cities. Yeah, sure. Let's fire it back up and take a look. That would be pretty funny, and uh, honestly not really even that difficult to do. <laughs> Thanks, Low End Life. I appreciate it. Uh, where should we go? Someone choose a wingly city. First, first message wins. Aglis, alright. Uh, let's see, Aglis. We've got two of them here. Uh, let's see if, uh... 69 is the boss battle. It is arguably the nicer combat stage. Yeah, so you can see we've got some weirdness going on with the uh, background transparency. Um, that is due to the fact that combat uses uh, some kind of custom rendering compared to the rest of the game. Yeah, Lepery, I think you are very right. I mean, I already find it painful to, uh, like, test anything on an, on an emulator just because of how frigging long it takes to load everything. Like, it just, it hurts. <laughs> I have completely ruined retail for myself, having played nothing but this for, uh, for years. Uh, Alright, somebody else pick a different uh, Wingly City.
Uh, disregard the glitch textures. That is a uh, bug that I have not fixed yet. All right, we got Forbidden Land first. Uh, what is the Forbidden Land called in game? Is that Xenobatos? Xenobatos? Edessa. All right, we got two different Cadessas. Let's try the first one first, I guess. Uh, yeah, Pony Row, I'm actually also somewhat colorblind. Um, mostly just uh, similar shades of red and green. But, uh, well, not similar shades. They look similar to me. Um, it wouldn't be too difficult to add, uh, colorblind modes, uh, just at the shader level. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's try out the other one. All right, a little on the simple side. Let's find something more uh, more interesting. Yep, exactly. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, May Phil was next on the suggestions. Helps if I spell it right. We got two of those as well, 54 and 68. Looking pretty good. We still don't have the backgrounds, of course. But the actual environments looking very nice. Let's take a look at 68. Translucency is working pretty well. Yeah, I'm thinking Kongol's Mohawk. Actually, yeah, now that I am seeing it here uh, with this background, like a moving background. Kongol's mohawk is actually translucent, so it's probably something to do with the weird uh, combat translucency. Uh, do we have any other requests while we're here? Maybe Velweb? Let's do Velweb. I'm giving myself a request. I sure don't remember this battle stage, but my memory of Disc 4 is always pretty fuzzy. And let's try the other one. Is it disc three? All right, my, I don't, I don't get to actually play the game. I just work on it. <laughs> the closest I've gotten to finishing the game in probably 15 years was uh, co-hosting 
the uh, first playthrough stream, so... <laughs> yeah, I kind of did. But uh, that's where the upscale mod will come into play. The world map controls are not working super well at the moment. Kind of difficult to navigate around properly. Take a look at some of these maps. Yeah, on these more zoomed in maps, you can really see, like, the 3D models and textures that they use in this game are, like, pretty good. Um, you know, the PS1 just could not do this game justice. It was just way too low of a resolution. Like, we haven't, I, I haven't done anything to these models or textures here. I'm just rendering them at much higher quality than the PS1 was capable of. Like, these are the actual original uh, models and textures. Not the save point light works. Save point's not there, but... And funny enough, a lot of these NPCs have, like, super, super detailed faces, like, way more detailed than uh, you could ever see in-game. And way more detailed than the party. Like, look at this guy. Look at his face. <clears throat> Why is that even a thing? Let's do something we haven't done in a while and embiggen someone. Let's see if I can find that guy in the front. Oh, I just realized I'm trying to uh, show alert indicators, but alert indicators do not render an OpenGL yet. So we're not going to see them either way. Uh, let's just... Start making people big until we find out who it is. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one either. I am starting to question if the scale is actually working. Let's try it with dart. Okay, it is working. Okay, yeah, that made that guy in the back there tall. That made that guy tall. There we go. All right, let's make this guy twice as big. Look at how detailed that is. The face, specifically. Not really anything else. Like, why? Look at Dart's face. There's barely anything to him. Make Dart bigger. Although it does look a hell of a lot better than it did on the uh, PS1. Oh yeah, just compare those. Makes it a lot easier to see the animations when they're big. Gonna look like he's kind of moonwalking though because he's... His stride is much larger. At 2x than it should be. Uh, sorry, just catching up on chat again. 
If only they had waited. Yeah, exactly. This guy is part of the main cast. Yeah. But still, like, even a bunch of people who very much are not part of the main cast get, like, super realistic, well, not super realistic, but, you know, much more detailed faces than the main party. How crazy how disconnected from the map the character models look without shadows. Yeah, shadows, uh, I need to do some uh, more groundwork on translucency before we can properly implement shadows. Uh, they are coming, though, that's for sure. <laughs> the dragoons are actually the NPCs. Yeah, we can all agree that literally every single person has more detailed face than Albert. Yes. Yes. Albert has two eyes that look terrified, and that's it. Hope we can find more secrets with this stuff in the future. Yeah, uh, we have found quite a few secrets already. Yeah, Zanryu, I miss, uh, just... I miss pixel art, to be honest with you. Like, the backgrounds aren't actually pixel art. They're, they were 3D scenes that they took a, a snapshot of. But, I mean, they, they do sort of evoke the same, like... Uh, I guess, like, whimsical nature of, like, really good pixel art. Like, Legend of Drag... Or, uh, like, uh, Golden Sun, for example. Funny that some side characters are better faces, but I think the reason for it is that it's single or double face texture and the main characters are more 3D shitty, in other words. Does it make sense or am I saying something something? I don't know, to be honest with you. The characters do get better models, uh, like in combat, uh, like in combat cutscenes and stuff. They'll swap in, like, higher quality faces and stuff like that, obviously, with, you know, moving features instead of just the the plain staticness um but yeah the sub map textures like even though like you know dart's armor and stuff is pretty detailed like you know the rest of them is just kind of meh hey why are you not working Let's close that and reopen it and see if that fixes it. 3-3 three, three, update. There we go. You can also really see that uh, the body parts are not necessarily connected. Also, uh, the soles of Dart's feet just don't exist. Fortunately, you can't really see that at uh, the normal scaling. But yeah, kind of funny to see, you know, they they basically, you know, uh, more, uh, a, a slightly higher quality model for the time would have, you know, like, uh, connective faces so that even when, like, Dart's legs were bent, you still wouldn't be able to see through them. Um, but, you know, they kind of squeezed as much performance out of the PS1 as they possibly could by, uh, you know, omitting as much as humanly possible without being able to see it. Yeah, it's also kind of funny that due to the way that uh, they uh, render submaps, um, like, Dart's model and, like, all of these other models are actually squished to be skinnier than they're supposed to be. Um, due to the fact that they render them too wide for the screen. Um, like the PS1 is 320 by 240 resolution, but they, act they actually render it at 368 by 240 and then squish it all down. So Dart's model should actually... 1.50. So 345 uh, and that would be the x-axis. The Dart's model should actually look like this. I know it's kind of, it's pretty subtle, but like, you know, it is definitely a difference. I think it looks a lot more natural like this. 
But unfortunately, we can't really fix that because then it would throw off collision. And uh, that's a no-go. They uh, really based everything around the uh, jankiness of the PS1, including the collision and everything. This is the uh, collision map. Collision is super, super complicated for uh, these 2D maps, um, or the maps with the 2D backgrounds, because they use the 2D background, so they've actually got, like, even though it's 2D, every area has a 3D model, and that's actually what I had going on the screen there. Like, this is actually a 3D model for this map. Um, and you can see, like, right here, it actually, like, goes uphill, and that's what controls, um, like, Dart's elevation, um, and the boundaries of these models <clears throat> are, uh, the boundary of the model is, like, the extent that you can walk to. Sorry, there is a lot more chat than I am used to, so I need to catch up again. Battle models look great. Yeah, there's, uh, they, they have, like, multiple different models for combat. Um, so there's, like, the main, uh, lower quality models, um, that, that are used, like, in, in the standard combat. Uh, but then during the combat engine cutscenes, They'll swap in, like, higher quality uh, faces and hands and stuff. No, no, uh, I mean, uh, chat, is, chat is good. Uh, I mean, it, uh, it me higher engagement with the chat means that more people will see these videos. And, uh, you know, that's better for everyone. Um, different comparison that I would make is the main cast has South Park character features and they have loose parts just connected to the body. Yeah, pretty much. Reverse engineering intentional jank must be hellish. You would not believe how long it took us to work out the math to get everything to line up properly uh, in the submaps. Um, it took TFZ and I like days, a week, maybe more just to get everything to line up properly. And we almost lost our minds, uh, as well as trying to figure out the math to get the field of view to work out correctly, because, um, well, let me just do a terrible illustration here. So, in 3D, you have your scene. And then you have a camera, which is a point off in the distance. And your field of view is kind of the angles here. Um, and you have a, you have like what you can see up close to the camera and what you can see far away. So in modern rendering, um, you just give the field of view in degrees, which is this angle here. LOD, on the other hand, uses the width of the scene, the height of the scene, and the depth of the projection. And then we had to use, um, it ended up not being like particularly complex trigonometry to uh, figure it all out. But, uh, yeah, that's how we figured out that LOD uses, like, at most a 17-degree field of view, which is, I mean, your average, like, modern game will be, at a minimum, like, 65 degrees. Uh, the ground looks like TV static with the collision map on. Yeah, kind of. Best thing to do with mods now is try to replace the characters with the battle models without causing it to have weird glitches. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that is definitely something that uh, I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in, and we are interested in looking into as well. Um, 
you know, just using these high quality models all the time because, you know, we don't have the limitations of a PS1. We can render much, much more complex scenes. Um, it would just be like way better, like all around. Um, well, making it so the high quality models are always used to break things. Um, that is a very good question. Um, I want to say probably not. Um, because you know, for the most part, like they're just swapping out like individual body parts. They mostly just like swap out the faces and the hands. Um, occasionally like weapons too. For example, in the first Congo cut scene in Hoax, um, they turn off his like normal axe and give him a much higher quality one. <clears throat> Uh, I think you lost your mind a long time ago. Yes, if I hadn't, I probably wouldn't have done this project at all. You are probably right. We also need to clean up after ourselves. Uh, model dot. I had a delete. No, I haven't. Dot model parts dot length. We don't want this. That is the player objects, uh, monster objects, and then in deallocate combat, we want to do the same thing, except it is battle stage dot. Nope, that's not it. Battle date, probably. I really should just check this instead of typing and hoping for the best, but I don't know what I do. That's uh, okay, where did I do that at? Battle preload entities. That one thing that Ink named and no one can ever remember the name of. All right. We are cleaned up. Model dog get bent exactly. Uh yeah, I uh I've been hydrating. I've got my uh trusty water bottle here with me. <laughs> yeah. Question: Will anything break everything? Answer. Not normally, but because LOD is so weird, definitely maybe. Do you understand? You understand. Yeah, we just gotta make sure that uh, combat still works now that I've added the deletion. Believe it or not, Elepri, that is not even close to the longest method name. Oh, I, I, I talked him down. Okay, that did, in fact, seem to work.
we're in pretty good shape here. Um, that was way easier than I expected it to be, and I'm actually going to commit that code right now. Best to keep these commits smaller. E game two. Get performance on MTFS in Windows 11 is abysmal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been I've been doing this for a very long time, so you know, after after a while, you get pretty used to to writing code. Looks good. Combat. Battle stage and basic entity. Oh, I mean, I guess combat is uh, kind of functional now. Did not mean to leave an extra space there, but would what would make it much more functional would be to uh, implement the UI. Which conveniently in a method called draw UI elements. Interestingly, in combat, they've got a bunch of checks like this, which are completely broken. They are checks to see if a battle entity is a monster or not, and uh, we haven't really looked into what happens if we actually fix them. Might be an interesting tangent for one of these days. First time catching a dev VOD live in a minute. Love your progress with OpenGL. How difficult will the menus be? Uh, hey, Forrest. Um, honestly, not too hard. We've got a lot of groundwork for uh, rendering like 2D UI overlays uh, done already. So it shouldn't be too bad. I bet you get used to it. I never finished my school for personal reasons, but I want to learn it back. Get time. Big deal. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, like I, I haven't gone to school uh, for it uh, either. Um, I, school just doesn't really uh, like work for me. Um, like for me to learn anything, like somebody talking at me, it's it's literally in a, in one ear out the other. Uh, I have ADHD, and uh, just like being in a classroom environment, like I just don't function at all. School is not like the end all be all. Uh, programming is something that you can really kind of tackle, uh, like at your own pace. Just kind of like learning by experimentation. Uh, and there's a lot of really good online resources as well. Is Zychronix saying close your two K? Or no, you were already here, Zychronix. I uh, revoke my hey. The second one, at least. Uh, yeah, Khan Academy, I would highly, highly recommend that for a lot of stuff. Um, that's that's uh, how I learned uh, a lot of uh, linear algebra. Yeah, it can be it can be overwhelming at first. There's there's a lot. Um, there's definitely a lot to programming. Um, it's a very different way of thinking because it's uh you know all it's it's mostly just like math and logic um but once like that sort of like logic way of thinking uh clicks then a lot of it really falls into place uh yeah Khan Academy uh highly highly recommended and it's it's free They're they're like proper courses too. Um, 
yeah, they've got all kinds of, you know, every bit of math you could ever need to know, uh, computer programming. Yeah, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, which is, you know, your basics for the web. Um, yeah, unfortunately, actually, it doesn't look like they have anything other for programming other than JavaScript. Um, but, you know, learning any one language, um, most, like most, like 95% of it transfers to uh, a lot of the other ones. Um, whereas JavaScript is a scripting language, you won't learn any of like the really low level, uh, like memory management and stuff like that, that you would need for something like C or C++, but learning JavaScript would be, you know, like a very good way of getting into, you know, like Java or Python or, uh, like C sharp or whatever. Yeah, I have similar feelings uh, about JavaScript as Elepri does, but uh, yeah, I mean, it is it is definitely um, one of the better languages for a new programmer to learn in order to uh, get a job, uh, because a lot of places are moving towards, like, you know, web apps for everything, which I also hate, but that is, it is what it is. Yeah, Javas JavaScript has a lot of nonsense, like um, equality that only works one way and stuff, but, you know, like I said, most of the of the skills do transfer to other to other languages so uh if it's on Khan Academy I can guarantee that it's it's a good course all right so we've got all of these calls to draw UI texture element these will all need to be converted <laughs> yeah, see that what Alepri just said there about float uh floating point equality, like that is also a very good example of why, you know, even taking like a four year university course, um, you know, it may give you like the knowledge to get started, but the wisdom uh and experience to actually uh to actually write code, you can only gain that by doing. It's like any trade, right? You know, you learn, you learn by doing. Aaron and I made a 2D fighting game with me and my friends with ourselves as sprites and finish moves. I just forgot how to do even simple stuff. Yeah, um, making games uh, is actually how I, I got into... Uh, uh, into programming myself um i used to uh well i took over development of a very very old uh 2d ripoff of rpg maker written in vb6 and uh that was kind of what really got me into it hey mr schooler uh thank you for the uh like and subscription i appreciate that Yeah, it's kind of funny, Kakashi. Like once you start, uh, once you start talking about it, you kind of start wanting to do it again. All right, I'm gonna try something a little hacky here. Let's do some cowboy going. So we are going to queue an orthographic overlay. Let's just build the model first. Final object. 
We just need a simple quad. I'm going to pause execution here just so that it's not using resources in the background. Apologies for the looping sound that's going to be playing for a while. Uh, I will actually mute my desktop audio for now. The only game I built was Python side scroller when I was in college. I live in terminal outputs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, Python is something that I have never really gotten into. Um, I've used a lot of different programming languages, but uh, yeah, not, not really Python for anything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, uh, Pony Bro, pretty much. All right, let's figure out these display metrics here. So, um, or I'm not going to bother with the position. We will use a matrix for that. Uh, what other metrics do we have? We've got the width and height. See how those are used. Hopefully. They're used for, yeah, they're used uniformly for the position and the uh, extra coordinates. So that's good. Okay, so we can put in our eyes. Going to be these. Um. the UVs. See what these other things are. Color lookup table offset. Um Okay, of course they're doing something a little weird here. <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan of, of Python as a language, but I mean, you can't deny that it has become very, very popular. Uh, it's certainly not a bad language to learn uh, from, like, a professional standpoint. And, uh, yeah, like Forrest is saying, like, a lot of uh, data analysis and stuff is being written as Python packages. So, really depends on what you're going to be doing. Okay. So it's always four bits per pixel. That'll give us those. I'm gonna copy these here for reference for now. Uh, not this. Or actually, no, we can't. Or so we need the table offset. Move these up here. Um, we need transparency. No, we do not. That's good. Uh, what is brightness index? Brightness index is something weird. Dimming modifier and brightness index. Okay, so we see these as well. Uh, 
So the portrait dimming modifier is this. And brightness index is this. Uh, okay, guys, so we'll actually need to pull the builder out here. And builder. Builder dot build. Do that. And we are also going to delete it. Actually, no, we just delete it immediately, can we? <laughs> okay, that, that was pretty funny. Hello, Taskbar, can you go away? Thank you. Um, end up with a memory leak here, but that's fine for now. So it transforms as well. Uh, transforms dot what identity for the affine transformations and a trans of these two values up here. And let's recompile. And see what happens. Absolutely nothing. Uh, oh, because we need to remove this because we do not use offsets in the same way that retail does. Try this again. This may or may not work. May not. <clears throat> okay. Uh, chat, I'm going to run to the bathroom for two seconds. I'll leave another beautiful BRB message. Uh, and I will be back in one moment. We'll continue this. All right, I am back.
<laughs> economical BRB screen, yeah. That's just how we do it here. Uh, as you may have uh, also seen from the thumbnail from this video, um, I make them myself. Uh, I'm I'm pretty talented with uh, Paint.net. Uh, my Halloween was pretty good. Um, I live uh, in the middle of nowhere on a mountain in a forest, so we literally do not get a single kid here. But we, my wife and I actually went to my parents' house to give out uh, treats because they live in town. Um, and the weekend before Halloween, I actually staffed a uh, local convention. Uh, so I was uh, there uh, all weekend. Let's see what the issue is here. So one thing we need to adjust these colors. Uh, so this will need to be Scale down like so. Nice. I uh I'm a pretty big fan of uh living out here. <laughs> we we actually moved here from the uh largest city in the province. Speaking of living out in the middle of nowhere, um, I am strongly considering getting solar panels installed, so that's pretty exciting. Okay, yes, focus. What is going wrong here? The Z coordinate, maybe? Getting queued at depth of 31 here. Um, I don't think the depth matters for the orthographic projections. Uh, no, I live in uh, Nova Scotia. In front of a school with screaming kids in the morning, yeah. I, uh, I lived in a uh, neighborhood in the city um, with you know, probably at least like, you know, one or 2000 people in the immediate area. Uh, and it was all just like apartment buildings. So it was pretty noisy there too. Also, uh, definitely not Saskatchewan because uh, it is a prairie and uh, there is not a single mountain in sight. <laughs> okay, so we've got the BPP, we've got the Color lookup table, we've got the VRAM position, we've got the size, UV, color, position. Um, while I am in here, I am going to make this less bad. Uh, bit static object. Trit. 
need three of these. Are we actually in a loop here? Yes, we are. We only need to build it if uh, portraits char slot is null. Okay, let's give this another try here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, all cryptocurrencies are bad cryptocurrencies, so... I mean, you're not wrong. Okay, do we get portraits? Hey, it's a portrait. Let's add some more stuff. Let's add names. I'm going to add secondary to your um, public static object build UI texture element, which is going to use the same. Whoops, I did something. All of the same parameters so that we can just make this a whole easier. <clears throat> okay. So that offset. Uh, we need the heads height. You, the, this was that uh, strange portrait dimming modifier variable. This index, and we just return that. <clears throat> Instead of all, whoops, did not mean to click that. Instead of all of this, we just have build you a texture element. We don't need the X and Y because those are set the with UV with height. Well, offset, which is this. I'm pressing random button. 
then the two brightness things, and that'll be it. There, much better. Heard in this favorite shape, the square. See you, Pony Bro. Thanks for uh, stopping by. We'll see you next time. All right, let's add names. Okay, so we've got our UVs, we've got our width and height, and we need hard-coded offset, and then both of these. Um, yeah, that will it for that. Um going to move the transforms. Static matrix or MV UI transforms. I guess these can all be final. Okay, so that's the renderer for the portraits, then we just need the renderer for this. Uh, that's pretty close to the same code. Uh, S25, Z is the same. And I think that should be good. Let's see if we got names. Yeah, it really is satisfying, especially when you take something massive and break it down into something that's actually, like, reasonable. For example, uh, every single menu in this entire game uh, in retail, like the original retail code, is handled by one single giant switch case. Uh, and it's about 3,000 lines of code. I have broken a thing. What thing did I broken? Oh, uh, it's because I used the wrong thing. Let's try that again. So yeah, anyway, I split that up so that all of the menus, like every single menu is its own class mm -hmm. now. And, uh, you know, it's actually possible to uh, work with it now, which is uh, a big step up. Also, it was so big that it would, like, lag the shit out of IntelliJ. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Although now I'm looking at these with the white background. Are those not supposed to be transparent? That's supposed to be transparent, right? No, I guess not. All right, we're fine. Everything's fine. 
Disregard me. Yeah, Forrest, that's that's literally it. Like that's that's what it was. Every single possible state that the menu could be in, including like, you know, the various states that it would transition through when loading or like mo going to a different menu screen. It it was a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> so I, I use Ghidra for decompiling, and uh, I thought when opening that method for the first time. Uh, I thought that Ghidra was just not working. Um, that was wrong. Uh, it just takes it like 10 minutes to decompile that method uh, when it normally would take, you know, like no more than one to two seconds. All right, so I don't have any OpenGL code set up yet for drawing lines, so we will ignore that. Yeah, the decomp the decompilation was definitely very, very interesting. Um, it was the it was the first time that I had ever done um any like like any proper uh like disassembly of code um like i didn't know mips assembly or anything about the lod code or ps1 hardware so uh it was a very it was a very learning experience um to say the least um i picked it up relatively quickly because i uh did have some experience with like creating uh, assembly languages for like custom computers and stuff just like as like a hobby thing uh, but the reverse engineering and porting process was uh, a very very long process um, it took like it took just about a year uh, to get like the very first like functionality working um, like being able to actually like scroll on the main, like the title screen of the game. And getting that controller input code working almost broke me. <laughs> like, uh, it, it was, at, uh, it was like up to a point where after like a month of just like not being able to get the controller input code working, like I was basically like ready to just like call it quits and uh eventually what i ended up doing was having to reverse engineer the entire ps1 bios and kernel and also port those to java um so like you know for quite a quite a long time there like LOD was actually basically like running on the PS1 operating system. Uh like even on PC. Most games had bad logic like that from the 90s. The N64 Mario game was forced to single player because of poor coding. Yeah, the Mario 64 was uh was super early and uh they uh didn't really have a, a great grasp on uh, the system yet. And, uh, you know, they didn't use, I think this is pretty common knowledge from all the YouTube videos now, but like they didn't use like optimizations for compilation or anything like that, just because they like weren't sure if the optimizations would actually like work properly. And they were getting like just enough performance out of it already that it was shippable so like you know just for safety they didn't do it but you do get some pretty bad performance hits at some points in the game reverse engineering project for that too and the guy got it lean enough to run two players at 60 fps that's pretty cool um yeah i've, I've seen quite a bit of uh uh Kaze Emanuar's videos on uh super mario 64 um basically like retooling and reworking um they're they're all very interesting. Uh he's he's very good at uh putting together videos like that, which I am unfortunately not because 
boy, do I have a lot of stuff that uh, we, we could talk about. But uh, yeah, I just don't have the time for uh, doing that or like learning how to put together a good video. Uh, I've been doing some assembly programming when I did a ROM hack for Pokemon and in college. It's so hard for me to stay motivated to keep going in assembly. Yeah, it's it's really uh, you have to really want something to write assembly. Like it is not not something that is easy to do. Um, if you don't really have like a, a an achievable goal in mind. Like you're you're never gonna go anywhere with it, because <laughs> you're the the language is not doing anything for you. It's not like you know. It's not like a, a language where you can just like ask it to do some complex thing, like load a file, and it'll do it for you. Um, my experience comes from. Um, well, ba basically, I was curious about how uh, computers worked at the chip level. So uh, I bought a bunch of breadboards and discrete components, um, like, you know, various uh, gates, registers, things like that, like discrete electronics components, and uh, basically built like a computer with no CPU, so like a an 8-bit computer that doesn't actually have like a, a processor. Um, like I built all of the circuits for it myself. Couldn't really do a whole lot. It could display three a three-digit number. Uh, it had RAM, temporary registers that could do basic math, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Just kind of like the very, very, very basics that a Turing complete computer needs to run. And uh, that was a very fun project. I actually have like a second version of it, sort of like, you know, nebulously like partially complete. Um, the only parts that I have like finished for the new version of it um, is the clock module, which is <clears throat> Unlike the old module, which you could kind of like tune the uh, computer speed uh, using just like a potentiometer, um, this one I made like a programmable uh, clock speed divisor. So like the programs can uh, like control the computer speed uh, at runtime. So like if they needed to like run more quickly or more slowly, they can do that. Um, and I also made a much, much more advanced, um, like arith uh, arithmetic unit that can also do logic. So it's able to do like any sort of math or logic operation, uh, within <clears throat> no more than I think six or seven cycles, um, like processor cycles. Um, and I did that just to kind of like absolutely minimize the amount of components that I need. It's still like four breadboards. And I want to say the grand total of wiring on those four breadboards just for like the math and logic was upwards of 80 feet of wire. So, but that being said, if I didn't do it that way, it would have probably been like, you know, nine, ten breadboards just for like the math and logic. So definitely worth it. Several of my college classes were centered around assembly with an older processor. So it's very fairly basic on what it did. What kind of processor was it? Uh was it like one of the old like uh Intel processors or uh like a MOS processor? I begged my college professor to switch our x86 assembly course to ARM so we could be relevant for the future. Yeah, x86 is a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> I uh, don't envy you. I, I do not know x86 assembly. Um, the only assembly that I know well is MIPS, which, I mean, also isn't relevant, but it is relevant to my interests, so that's what I chose to learn. 
And uh, yeah, I, I just picked it up from like banging my head against the uh, Ghidra disassembler working on this. <laughs> Okay, let's uh let's actually do something here. I've just been talking for however long. You need a two dimensional array here. Or rather a uh, three dimensional array. No, two dimensional. Uh gonna be the bars. That's three by three. <clears throat> bar slot. I for the bar index. Build. I think we, yeah, we can just copy and paste here. We only want to do that. This is null. And then we need our transformations that we can actually put it in the right spot. Um, that's just going to be plus that and plus that using the same method, so it's the same Z depth, and this also needs to be bars. Bar slot I. Okay, let's see if that renders now. Yeah, as I said before, I have ADHD, and it is not difficult to get me off topic. Honestly, it's a goddamn miracle that I'm still working on this, because I usually start projects uh, and then just kind of lose interest in them after, you know, two, three months. This, on the other hand, we are coming right up on the uh, three-year anniversary. Uh, I started it in either November or December of 2020. So, yeah. Okay, so I guess those weren't actually the bars. They were just the uh, text for that. So, but it is rendering. Um, I guess we'll just call that stats. Yeah, I'm uh I'm happy I've stuck with it too. I mean, I've I've de definitely come a long way from the uh un kid with undiagnosed ADHD to now. <laughs> but uh I think this is probably like by far the longest that I've ever stuck with a uh like single project. And uh, I, I still find it interesting, so. And what kind of weirdness going on here? Um... Okay, so the SP is done a little bit strangely. Um, we will need to be able to switch something. I think it's just the bars that need to switch, isn't it? If can transform. So that is only there if uh, 
Okay, so that's not necessarily whether or not they uh, can transform now. It's just whether or not they can transform at all. Okay, that makes a little more sense. X86 can be dangerous if you're on an X86 system. A few people had to reinstall their OS from bad assembly coding. No idea what they did besides maybe accessing memory they shouldn't have. That's a bit of an odd situation. You ever write code so bad that you break your operating system? Given up on HD remaster up until now. Yeah, I mean... It's it it it's kind of like the the project's a bit weird, right? Like we're not technically like remastering anything. We're not improving the models or the textures or anything like that. But we're just we're doing what the game does, but we're doing it better. You know, between the uh models, uh the model rendering, the texture quality, um at render time uh even for like music and sound um we have uh you know vastly vastly improved the audio quality because just the the ps1's uh, sound processor just really really kills it the mc68 hc12 sounds really familiar Motorola. Is that a newer processor? Vision history, August 2001 on the data sheet. Yeah, I think that is a newer processor. I don't have a whole lot of uh, experience with uh, newer hardware. My my interest really lies in like in in retro hardware. To be honest with you, like I I probably would never um, mm -hmm. never bother to like pick up uh, like one of these more modern processors from the past like twenty twenty five years. Um, but on the other hand, I, I uh, do find like much, much older hardware very interesting. And it's it's more interesting to me because you can actually like understand how it works at a fundamental level. Like you take a modern like x86 processor, and like a human being cannot understand an entire processor. Like you need a room full of engineers that all specialize in the specific portion of that uh, processor. What was I doing? <laughs> okay. Um, we can delete this now. That is no longer needed. Around 06, 08. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I uh, I wasn't I wasn't around when the Commodore 64 first came out. Um, I was born in uh, the early 90s, uh, and the Commodore was uh, like early 80s. But uh, my dad had a Commodore 64. Um, among various other old computers. And uh, he used to do a lot of programming on that when he was younger. Um, he made some uh, pretty cool old games, like a, a snowmobiling game with like actual physics and stuff, where uh, you would like drive through the fields that they used to drive their uh, snowmobiles through. And uh, that's that's where I originally learned like uh, basic programming.
Okay, so the actual bars. What they're doing here is odd. What exactly is this? <clears throat> so I think, yeah, okay. So yeah, there's multiple passes to the SP rendering because you could have bars overlaid on bars, right? Um, like, you know, if, if you're partway through gaining SP to the next level. You could have like one color bar rendered on top of another full bar below it. So that is why we have two layers deep here. Um, oh, okay, so that is not relevant to here. So this actually only needs to be too deep. I think this variable name is actually just a really poor name, maybe? Oh, these are, this is two entirely different variables. This just needs to be renamed. <laughs> I got an Uncle Vincent Meyer and I was getting really weirded out if you happen to be him. That would be very strange. Uh one of the uh one of the guys in the Discord server is actually uh, also Nova Scotian and we had a uh brief but very real amount of concern that uh, we might have been cousins due to some uh, shared heritage. <laughs> okay, so... Hmm, this is not going to work because the bars can change size uh, at any time based on their uh, how full your SP is. We should focus on something else for now, because I don't want to uh, bog down on figuring that out yet. Where is the actual HP and MP drawn? This is SP, SP border, SP meter, background. Item menus. Uh, where would that be? And why is it not in this method? <laughs> I love how they just put like half of the menu code in one place and the other half somewhere completely different. Uh, actually, I just realized uh, we've already been going for about two hours now. So I think we will probably wrap it up here.
Um, does anybody have uh, any other questions before we go? Just take another look and admire today's work. Very smooth world map at 60 frames per second. Come into combat. Yeah, for anyone who uh, missed the beginning of the stream, uh, all of this combat rendering um, is uh, new as of today. So we've made some pretty significant progress here. Um, this actually makes combat like somewhat functional um and the game that much more playable now in the OpenGL branch so very very uh very good progress uh you are welcome chocolate and uh thank you Ontario uh yeah so thanks to everybody for uh tuning in tonight um if you want to support me and my projects like this um there will be a link to my Kofi in the chat. Uh, thanks to my uh, current subscribers, uh, the Packle, Jman001, Deningrad, Sparta, Shepard, Zach, Chocolate, Platinum Sarge, Doom Metal, Milk Lizard, uh, Vince Easter, Balder, Ambi, and an anonymous donor, uh, as well as Inc. for the recent huge donation, which was ridiculous. And uh, hopefully uh, we will see uh, everyone in the next stream next Wednesday. Thanks, everyone.